it's implausible that silver could be driven over 100 to 1 again when the same actors are physically backed with gold. So based upon the current gold price at around 1800, this technically puts silver right now at 55 bucks. That's where it should be. And as we've discussed, and, and we're talking about, we're talking about moving in on, uh, on the wholesale market and providing wholesale silver to everybody. <laughs> silver comes to silver, the passion, the passion rises, I know, but you're not alone. And, uh, and we all have that. I think we have silver in our blood. So while gold has been attracting, I think it's important to understand why has silver been under, underperforming as well? Um, while gold's been attracting this safe haven flow, as, as we discussed alongside the dollar, it's really patently obvious that the inverse dollar to SI algo, this is the algorithm which is similar to gold, that it really is, if the dollar's rising, uh, you sell a, the silver futures contract um, or even the forward contract. And, and so basically, but whereas gold was getting enough inflows, safe haven inflows to, uh, to overcome uh, these flows, silver was overwhelmed. Um, and it really, yes, there is safe haven flows coming in, but there was such a volume of selling, paper market selling, that what it did though, was actually create a wonderful opportunity. Uh, and if you saw, if you were looking at the ticks and you, you would, if, as trade, I mean, obviously if you're a stacker, hey, you know, who cares, you're buying it and, and this is, none of this is really important. But if you were a trader, you would have noticed that last Friday, right at the close, at the market close, they banged the silver contract, the September silver contract, down just below 23. But if you've been looking closely, the spot silver market, i.e. the more physical side of the market, the FX market, never closed below 23. And it closed also above the further out December futures contract. Now, this is an EFP dislocation and deep backwardation in December silver as well, hey, clearly that's not sustainable. And again, another thing we haven't seen since March 2020. Now, really, that clue is there. It's, a, it's just how dislocated the silver future price has been driven from a physical supply fundamental uh, perspective. And that was evident when spot silver um, had, or even though it did close above 23, at one moment it dipped under 23. Uh, but it drove the spot price of silver five cent higher than Comex futures. That's the first time, as I say, since March 2020, before an $18 rally came. And but this dip into 23 came at exactly the same time. We were on to our largest Russian refinery, orders pouring in, a, seeking silver at 23 in spot. They were reported they were completely sold out of all wholesale supply. Why? Because there's a race into silver. And this immediately spilled over into all the other re refineries. Uh, you know, there was a race to buy a thousand ounce wholesale bars. It, it just exploded. So in short, not a single silver ounce was available at 23, nor will it be. None of this baked it is baked into the COMEX silver pricing, but all first and second tier market makers are aware of this dislocation and are busy taking the long side of every sell order. And also, at this price, backwardated COMEX silver right through the September contract, which expires, which goes into options expiry tomorrow on Thursday and expires at the end of the month, all the way through to December. This has become the cheapest deliverable silver on planet Earth. And we need to think about this for a second. Just think about this. It's a deliverable market. Silver was being sourced for delivery at the COMEX to flow back to refiners so they could fill orders at a premium to spot. It's a no-brainer. This is now obviously being arbitraged as the insiders I mean, they had to step in to stem this condition from occurring again, but it blew right back. And it really sets the, 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 the situation where is how much more can you sell? Well, really, this is not a good condition to put yourself in. And then they mean, it, what it means, they have to allow the price to rise as we move into season next month. Now, in the meantime, yes, by a little, a little bid pulling here, a little bid pulling there, 
You can keep incentivizing uh, the spec sellers, paper sellers, just to technically try and chase silver to zero. They have no concept of the physical side, and uh, but that's the nature of the game. So I would say anybody, anybody who is looking to buy silver um, is is really bottom line. I mean, this is a condition that that it, 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 in when you look back at this situation, you kick yourself for not capitalizing on this ludicrous situation. And um, I mean, this sets up silver for, for a silver rally from this ridiculous 22295 uh, level, which is actually even that was ten dollars and twenty nine cents higher than the, the twelve thousand March 2020 low. But it's a stair step higher. Uh, and we still have an expectation from that at a, for an eighteen dollar rally into around, let's say, thirty five to forty as a first step. And I also will rhyme what you're saying. Um, there is something coming up and, and it relates to exactly what we've just been talking about. There is a, a major, a major move coming. And um, I think you just need to be watching, uh, certainly be watching the Kinesis uh, exchange very, very closely. Uh, the current silver suppression flywheel, it, that is the gold silver ratio. Um, which has been driven pff, to what, 77 to 1 in the I mean ludicrous any further paper market selling from here on and this is not just my view this is really the the view of all liquidity providers we've spoken to I mean this would expand this ratio to even more of a nosebleed level and footprints evidence that insiders are already one-to-one -one long well actually they're one-to-one -one short on that trade meaning they're long silver short gold um, because if you look at the the options uh, sweet spots and you look at their their positioning and that's why it's still 25 5 to 26 dollars I mean very short term I'm not saying of course we're going to be substantially higher than that but even now that is what they're looking at. This is this is a hugely profitable trade for them because they know they're well below where they have assessed they want silver, even for options this month. And if this if it fails to be achieved, you can watch out for air pockets above that after options expiration as deliveries come in, as these exercises of these options contracts expire. Now I don't get too technical, but basically. Our best assessment, aggregate assessment, not just mine, is around 32 to 1. That, that's kind of where it should be at the, in January. Let's just say in January. And, and there's a lot of insider money to be made on the, on the long silver short gold trade as gold moves into Basel III compliance. It's implausible that silver could be driven over 100 to 1 again when the same actors are physically backed with gold. So based upon the current gold price at around 1800 this technically puts silver right now 55 bucks that's where it should be and when gc hits the basel 3 compliance date of around 23 to 2500 and that's conservative uh, that'll be let's just say on december the 31st what we less than four months that's likely going to be around 70 bucks an ounce simply on that ratio and this seems implausible to the current PSYOPs operation that you're watch witnessing now. But every single market making first and second year bank is accumulating physical silver for exactly that reason. And that's why you should keep an eye on what's going on at Kinesis because it is very, very tight. And as we've discussed, and, and we're talking about, we're talking about moving in on, uh, on the wholesale market and providing wholesale silver to everybody. Silver, although it's joined at the hip to gold, is not yet in sync with, you know, gold's uh, Basel III compliance, the gold's COMEX futures Basel III compliance. And, and it, you know, it continues to evidence inside a bid pulling. Not They're not going short. They're pulling bids in a clear attempt to suck in more naked short technical sellers for these same market making insiders to take the long side of. This will not be sustainable into such tight physical conditions just as we move into season on September the 1st. And we likely start to evidence short covering really in a very short term, if we would like to see that after options, as delivery obligations simply have at this point to be hedged 
with fresh physical supply to bolster and offset these delivery demands. So really, to answer your question, Shane, uh, silver has reached a sufficient divergent price where refiners will now start to buy Comex silver, if you discount it any further than it is, to bolster sold out inventories to simply fulfill global orders they do not have the inventory to supply. It's that simple. We have never, ever, ever encountered this condition before in silver in the whole history of the Comex.